America's Champion Swimmer, Gertrude Aderley, by David A. Adler, illustrated by Terry Widener. How did Gertrude Aderley surprise the world? Genre A biography gives facts about a real person's life. Why did the author write a biography about Gertrude Aderley? In 1906, women were kept out of many clubs and restaurants. In most states, they were not allowed to vote. Many people felt a woman's place was in the home. But Gertrude Aderley's place was in the water. Gertrude Aderley was born on October 23, 1906. She was the third of six children and was raised in New York City where she lived in an apartment next to her father's butcher shop. Her family called her Gertie. Most everyone else called her Trudy. Trudy spent her early years playing on the sidewalks of New York. It wasn't until she was seven that she had her first adventure in the water. While visiting her grandmother in Germany, Trudy fell into a pond and nearly drowned. After that near disaster, Trudy's father was determined to teach her to swim. For her first lesson, he tied one end of a rope to Trudy's waist and held on to the other end. He put Trudy into a river and told her to paddle like a dog. Trudy mastered the dog paddle. She joined her older sister Margaret and the other children in the water and copied their strokes. Soon Trudy swam better than any of them. From that summer on, it was hard to keep Trudy out of the water. She loved to swim. At the age of 13, she became a member of the New York Women's Swimming Association and took lessons there. At 15, Trudy won her first big race. The next year, she attempted to be the first woman to swim the more than 17 miles from Lower Manhattan to Sandy Hook, New Jersey. When Trudy slowed down, her sister Margaret yelled, Get going, lazy bones! And Trudy did! She finished in just over seven hours, and she beat the men's record. People were beginning to notice Gertrude Aderley. Newspapers described her as courageous, determined, modest, and poised. They called her the most perfect swimmer. Trudy's mother said she was just a plain home girl. In 1924, this plain home girl was good enough to make the U.S. Olympic team. Trudy won three medals at the Games in Paris. Her team won more points than all the other country's swimming teams combined. By 1925, Trudy had set 29 U.S. and world records. She was determined to take on the ultimate challenge, the English Channel. Many had tried to swim the more than 20-mile-wide body of cold, rough water that separates England from France, but only five men, and no women, had ever made it all the way across. Many people were sure Trudy couldn't do it. A newspaper editorial declared that Trudy wouldn't make it and that women must admit they would remain forever the weaker sex. It didn't matter to Trudy what people said or wrote. She was going to swim the channel. Early in the morning on August 18, 1925, 
Trudy stepped into the water at Cape Grenet, France, the starting point for the swim. For almost nine hours, she fought the strong current. Then, when Trudy had less than seven miles to go, her trainer thought she had swallowed too much water and pulled her, crying, from the sea. Trudy did not give up her dream. She found a new trainer, and a year later, on Friday, August 6, 1926, she was ready to try again. Trudy wore a red bathing cap and a two-piece bathing suit and goggles that she and her sister Margaret had designed. To protect her from the icy cold water, Margaret coated Trudy with lanolin and heavy grease. The greasing took a long time, too long for Trudy. For heaven's sake, she complained, let's get started. Finally, at a little past seven in the morning, she stepped into the water. Gee, but it's cold, Trudy said. Trudy's father, her sister Margaret, her trainer, and a few other swimmers were on board a tugboat named Alsace. The boat would accompany Trudy to make sure she didn't get lost in the fog and was safe from jellyfish, sharks, and the channel's powerful currents. There was a second boat, too, with reporters and photographers on board. As the Alsace bobbed up and down in the choppy water, Margaret wrote in chalk on the side of the boat, This way, old kid. She drew an arrow that pointed to England. To entertain Trudy, Margaret and some of the others sang American songs, including The Star-Spangled Banner and East Side, West Side. Trudy said the songs kept her brain and spirit good. At first, the sea was calm. Trudy swam so fast that her trainer was afraid she would tire herself out. He ordered her to slow down. Trudy refused. At about 10.30 in the morning, Trudy had her first meal. She floated on her back and ate chicken and drank beef broth. A while later, she ate chocolate and chewed on sugar cubes. Then she swam on. At about 1.30 in the afternoon, it started to rain. A strong wind stirred the water. For a while, Trudy would swim forward a few feet, only to be pulled back twice as far. By six o'clock, the tide was stronger. The waves were twenty feet high. The rough water made the people aboard the Alsace and the newsboat seasick. Trudy's trainer was sure she couldn't finish the swim. He told her to give up. No, no, Trudy yelled over the sound of the waves. She kept swimming. In the next few hours, the rain and wind became stronger and the sea rougher. At times, the rough water pulled the boats away, out of Trudy's sight. She was scared. It was eerie being out there all alone. Now Trudy began to have trouble kicking in the water. When the Alsace came close again, Trudy said her left leg had become stiff. Her trainer was frightened for her. He yelled, You must come out! What for? Trudy shouted and kept swimming. Trudy continued to fight the tide and the constant stinging spray of water in her face. She knew she would either swim the channel or drown. As Trudy neared Kingsdown on the coast of England, she saw thousands of people gathered to greet her. 
they lit flares to guide her to shore. At about 9.40 at night, after more than 14 hours in the water, Trudy's feet touched land. Hundreds of people, fully dressed, waded into the water to greet her. When she reached the shore, her father hugged Trudy and wrapped her in a warm robe. I knew if it could be done, it had to be done, and I did it, Trudy said after she got ashore. All the women of the world will celebrate. Trudy swam the channel in just 14 hours and 31 minutes. She beat the men's record by almost two hours. In newspapers across the world, Trudy's swim was called history-making. Reporters declared that the myth that women are the weaker sex was shattered and shattered forever. Trudy sailed home aboard the SS Berengaria. After six days at sea, the ship entered New York Harbor. Two airplanes circled and tipped their wings to greet Trudy. People on boats of all kinds rang their bells and tooted their horns to salute her. Fog horns sounded. Trudy climbed into an open car for a parade up Lower Broadway. An estimated two million people, many of them women, stood and cheered. They threw scraps of newspaper, ticker tape, pages torn from telephone books, and rolls of toilet paper. When her car arrived at the New York City Hall, Mayor Jimmy Walker praised Trudy for her courage, grace, and athletic prowess. American women, he said, have ever added to the glory of our nation. President Calvin Coolidge sent a message that was read at the ceremony. He called Trudy America's best girl. And she was. Gertrude Aderley had become a beacon of strength to girls and women everywhere. <laughs>